Yeah, we are talking about MetaZoo and what would have been my plan. So I actually did have a plan. I spoke to Nick about that plan. I even went as far as putting that plan on a YouTube video. I was going to honor the pre-orders, but not by printing new product because that would be really, really expensive. I was going to give everyone with a pre-order Rudy cards. And you might be like, oh, is it because you hate Rudy? No, it's because Rudy cards, alpha investment cards, are the only cards worth any amount of money. Now, you could choose between alpha investment, Hello Kitty cards. I just don't know if Sanrio, based on the fact that MetaZoo didn't pay them, right? Sanrio was one of the people suing MetaZoo, would be okay with us printing more Hello Kitty. So as a IP attorney, I could understand that we did breach a contract if you breach contract, Sanrio is not going to allow you to continue on with that license. That's very logical. That's very, what I think would have happened is you don't pay the money to Sanrio. Sanrio says, stop printing Hello Kitty. Stop it. And the only thing we have left in inventory that we could print is a value. There's literally nothing of value. Right? These cards are literally being put into the dumpsters. And they had to file for bankruptcy to prevent the shawl guy from putting more of them into the dumpster, right? How many did he put in the dumpster? We will never know. And it makes sense from his standpoint. He's not getting paid. He's owed $56,000. This shit is just taking space in his warehouses. Therefore, he probably wants to get rid of the Meta Zoo and get a paying client. That's my opinion of why these items were being dumped. It makes perfect sense now. And now he's uh, holding the items. He is also a bag holder, if you will. Look, man, at the end of the day, uh, there's something of like doing its self-interest. So they raised a lot of money to fund a lawyer for Mike Waddell. They did a fundraiser with, I believe, Bailey and Mike on Kickstarter. Or not Kickstarter, that's a different fundraiser. Met on Whatnot. And the hero of the auction, he paid all this much money, right? He's one of my biggest critics. He didn't buy MetaZoo when it was $820 a box. He's buying MetaZoo when it's $20 a box. So I'll put it out there. He's not a OG of MetaZoo. They funded Mike Waddell's lawyer or legal team selling original artwork which I believe belong to the artist. The way Magic the Gathering, and Magic the Gathering is heavily criticized for how it treats artists. I, and I've been on the forefront of, of that. From cosplayers to Teresa Nielsen to other artists that I enjoyed. Magic is not a saint by any matter. But when Teresa, they commissioned Teresa Nielsen to do Force of Will, she gets to keep the original artwork. And then that original artwork, she can then sell for, I think Force of Will went for north of six figures. And that goes into her pockets. I don't know how MetaZoo is doing this, where all the artwork seems to end up in Mike Waddell's hands. I don't know what license agreement they have. And it doesn't make sense to me. But they literally funded a lawyer from Mike Waddell to go to bankruptcy by selling original art pieces on whatnot. I was on whatnot. I saw that. And they were they were so proud of themselves, that MetaZoo community. Do you know the majority of this debt? Who is who it is owed to? The customers and the players. Players who have never been paid. They were promised to be paid multiple times, including in the 2024 roadmap as recent as that they still didn't get paid there are collectors right there are people who pre-ordered stream native streamer kits valentine day whatever it is they didn't get paid do you know whose debt is being wiped out do you know where the debt is coming from the as Nick mentioned, 1.5 million of the 1.7 million is unsecured debt most of that unsecured debt is pre-orders. That's why there's 600 bloody pages of people who they owe money to. They funded 
You, you cannot make this up. This is beyond, like, stupid. This is the lowest IQ move I've ever seen as a lawyer. They paid Mike Wardell to go to bankruptcy so Mike Wardell doesn't have to pay them or fulfill their orders or refund them. Do you know how stupid you have to be to do that? And you could see a mile, a month, and you might, what is the proof of this? The proof is the unsecured debt. They actually have $1.7 million in debt. And it's not just you and your brother who they owe $100 to for the native streamer kit. It is a lot of people. And these are not businesses. These are not LLCs. These are not corporations. These are individuals. So the assumption is this has to be pre-orders or that there are players that have not been paid yet. That would be a very, very, I, I'm 99% certain that is the case when you have that many people you owe money to. Also, you got Mike Waddell and you got this guy on Netflix, right? Um, this, is, this is a crazy episode, guys. So Mike Waddell brings out a original piece of artwork. And he says, hey, I initially uh, commissioned this for $20, he said. And you know what value they gave this $20 piece of shit? $25,000. They couldn't even do $20,000. They had to do $25,000. Here's the Hello Kitty sheet for $5,000 you can get in China for a buck. You probably get $10 shipped to you, D8's out. There's a Chinese factory, and this is what I don't think MetaZoo understands. The only reason they're not printing more MetaZoo isn't because they're worried about the bankruptcy or they care about any American laws. It's because it has no value. Do you understand this? There are, there's, what, 700 pallets of, of things that ha have to be sold before they can print more? Like, this whole story is insane. And it's insane not for the reason you believe it is insane. It's insane because... The customers, the MetaZoo fans, they still want Mike Wardell to lead them. How many times can, you know, I made a poll. How many times can you be pumped and dumped? You were pumped and dumped by Alpha Investment. There's no argument. Just forget your emotions. Focus on the numbers. Nightfall kit, which the majority of the value was attributed to the Nightfall first edition booster box, $40 or less today. It was sold for $820 not so long ago. Mike Waddell, this piece of paper that we're seeing right now, originally it was $20 a pop. So, okay, not $20. He paid $40 for it. And now the current value, according to this Netflix show, is $25,000. Would you pay $25,000 for this? MetaZoo fans would definitely play. But none of them have no money because they're broke. So you got pump and dumps from Ask, Ask Ketchum, Ketchum Collectibles. You got pump and dumps from... Our Ask Argos what he sold Hello Kitty for. And then look at the price today. Ask Ketchum All Collective what did he sell his MetaZoo for. And then look at the price today. I bet you it's lower today by at least 50%, if not 75%, if not even more. Some of the products they were selling. At the end of the day, this thing writes itself. I don't need to make up stories about MetaZoo. I don't know. All you need to know is they literally funded the lawyer who's going to make sure they never get their pre-orders. They paid, they paid money for that. You, you can't make up. Look at this value. 20 estimated value. 20, motherfucker, $25,000 might buy the entire company at this point in time. You know, like... <laughs> Guys, this is bad. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. We're going to slaughter. You know, I had sympathy for the MetaZoo fans because they lost money. And I, I generally have very sympathy for victims if you watch my other channel. I always protect the victims. I always don't make fun of their, them when they get stabbed by CryptoZoo. I, I never go after the victims because they're victims. But when the victims are funding the dude who's, who is... Uh, scamming them i mean at what point in time are these just victims and these are just idiots right like at what point in time do you have to be like hmm 
there's something that's not right here. This relationship is like a cult or something. There's something that I don't understand. Why would the victims be funding their abuser? You know, you might be like, oh, maybe it's the Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I think, honestly, I've seen the Stockholm Syndrome when I work in immigration where uh, very, there are, uh, I, I don't know if I want to get into it, but there are many, many, uh, and the culture is different. I'll just put it, the culture is different where, especially in some Asian countries where the wife wants to protect the husband and the husband is very abusive and they and the wife is clearly being beat up and you're you're kind of, you're stuck in a really tough place because he doesn't he's asked he's telling you not to call the police or child custody but you know you have to because it's a legal recommendation and and then 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 they, then if you do it then she won't come to you next time when she's being abused so you know i it's some really heartbreaking cases i'm doing i'm doing a, another case this friday so and it sounds real bad Oh God, <laughs> I wake up Friday morning to do it. And I've already read the case report. It's also, by the way, it's pro bono. I, I don't know what the F people are saying. I do more volunteer work than a whole motherfucking Mazdu community combined. 